is word of a partial truce in our 18-year war with the Taliban. It now, is set to begin today. calls for a reduction of it's violence. Clear what exactly a reduction in violence means. On February 21st, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that the United States and the Taliban plan to sign a peace deal at the end of the month. All sides are tired of fighting. We've arrived at a historic opportunity for peace. The signing is contingent on a week-long reduction in violence across Afghanistan. It's important to say that this is a potentially momentous point in the Afghanistan war, that this is the first moment in almost 20 years of conflict involving the United States that there's a real chance that there could be a political resolution or a peaceful settlement to the war. It's important to recognize the significance of this moment, even if it doesn't pan out in a real end of the fighting, which, you know, there's a lot of reasons to be skeptical about that. They're dead. They're dead. As far as I'm concerned, they're dead. They thought that they had to kill people in order to put themselves in a little better negotiating position. When they did that, they killed 12 people. One happened to be a great American soldier. And last September, we were on the cusp of a very similar deal, basically the same scenario. President Trump had invited elements of the Taliban to travel to the United States for some sort of signing ceremony, and that was called off at the last minute because the Taliban conducted an attack which resulted in the death of a number of people, including an American soldier. Under the terms, the Taliban, the United States, and Afghan government-aligned forces would seize all planned offensive operations across the country. The post Susanna George traveled to the Helmand province, a Taliban stronghold, during the week of reduced violence. So we saw scenes like this one all over Helmand as we were reporting this story. This is a group of pro-government militiamen, and they're walking along this road that runs along a canal that separates Taliban-held territory from government-held territory, and it's really just a few hundred yards between the two sides. This is a place where they wouldn't have been able to set foot just a few days ago without being shot at by the Taliban, but you can see that they're just hanging out on the banks of the canal. So this is at an outpost that's just on the edge of Marja in central Helmand. So when we arrived at the base, the soldiers there, they told us that earlier in the day, Taliban fighters, a small group, drove up to the base and they wanted to talk to the soldiers. And what one of the soldiers at the base told us is he thinks that the Taliban came over because they're curious. They want to meet the people who they've been shooting at for the last few years. As the day went on, the soldiers at this base continued yelling to the nearest Taliban base. And finally, a Taliban fighter drove up on, on a motorcycle and the soldiers you know, quickly ran out and started making their way across this field to meet with them. They were calling out things like, come sit with us, have lunch, uh, we'll bring a good chicken for you. But the Taliban fighter, you know, was yelling back that, you know, all of these things were um, strictly forbidden by his commanders, even during this reduction in violence period. And he quickly kind of sped off. But the soldiers, when they returned, they were really positive. One, uh, many of them were ecstatic, actually. They said that they felt like this showed that both sides wanted peace and that as the days of the reduction in violence continue, that they'll get closer and closer to that sit-down, in-person, formal meeting with the Taliban. So really, the United States is trying to use its leverage as the largest foreign combatant in Afghanistan to kickstart a political peace process between um, the Afghans. And so the hope is that eventually would lead to an interim government and some sort of resolution that integrates elements of the Taliban into the leadership of Afghanistan. Since 2001, nearly 800,000 U.S. troops have been deployed to Afghanistan, some more than once. Of those, 2,300 have died. Some 20,000 more have been wounded. 
one of the primary things to worry about is splits within the Taliban and factions within the Taliban not uh, respecting uh, a ceasefire or not respecting the terms of um, the agreement. There's also the problem of whether or not the, the Afghan parties could ever agree to something if they do get to the peace table. We don't know much about whether the Taliban has abandoned its earlier positions that are extremely problematic, including you know its previous refusal to let women take part in public life. And you know, on the other hand, there's a lot of reservations among the Afghans on the other side about the potential for allowing the Taliban to impose its hardline rules again in a country that now is vastly different in 2020 than it was in the 1990s. We're like policemen. We're not fighting a war. If we wanted to fight a war in Afghanistan and win it, I could win that war in a week. I just don't want to kill 10 million people. There's a strong desire on the part of um, the Trump administration on a political level to reach this agreement, in part because we know that President Trump really wants to withdraw troops from Afghanistan, and this would hypothetically allow him to do that. There's also a strong desire on the part of the U.S. military to reach a political settlement uh, because they, again, believe that the war is not going to be won militarily. They've tried all sorts of different strategies. They've tried different troop levels. And uh, the war has essentially been in a stalemate for years now. What the, the American commander in Afghanistan, uh, General Austin Miller, has said is that he could do the current mission, which is about counterterrorism and about advising and training Afghan forces with a smaller force. So if there's a future government that includes some elements of the Taliban and some elements of you know, other Afghans, that they would be able to reach a consensus about having some sort of modest, continued American troop presence. That's the hope, at least. And so we would just have to see how that goes.